Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a very small Java GUI application that is going to allow the user to find the IP addresses of websites. Okay, so it's going to be an IP finder uh, application using Java graphical user interface. So without delay, let's begin. So the first thing we need to know uh, how my project is structured. I have two classes. I have the main class that I call test app. I have another class that I called my frame. So I'm going to use this particular class to create frame object. And uh, here are the, the attributes of the frame. I have the size, I have the title. So I called it IP finder um, app. So that's going to be the title of my frame. I have the set relative. Uh, I need to add a set layout method and I will set it to null. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to declare our GUI components. So we will need three of them. The first one is going to be a button. So we will say J button BTN. The second one I will need will be my label. So I'll say J label label. The third one will be a text field. So I'll say J text field. I will call it text field and then semicolon. So I need to import these various classes. The first one will be text field, J label, and then J. So this has been done. So now I need to instantiate these GUI components in the constructor. So here is the constructor. I will say for, let me start with the text field. I say text field, assignment operator new, J text field, semicolon. I will also do the same thing for the label. So I'll say label, assignment operator new, J label. For now, I'm not going to set the text yet. And then finally, I will instantiate the button, new J button. And here I will say, find out the IP address. So I can say, find out about the, uh, the IP address. Okay, so I can add all of this to my frame. So I will say this that add text field, this that add label. Okay, don't forget the semicolons here. Then I will say this that add. ETN. So as you know, we set the, the, the layout to null. We need to now add the set bounds method. So for the text field, we say set bound 375, 200. So I'll say 50. I will also need to set the bounds for the label. Here I will change the label. So I'll say 150 for X axis. And I will leave the same dimension. Let me work on the button as well. So 200, and for now, let me leave the dimensions like this. So when I come and run, nothing is happening because we have to create a frame object in our main method, in the main class here. All right, so I will say my frame, frame assign, assignment operator, my frame, and then semicolon. So now when you run, so we are seeing only the text field. I need to change that here. It's gonna be button, come and run. All right, so now we have the text field and then we also have the button. So the label is not showing because we have not set that label's text. So if I set the text and say this is a label and then run, now you can see the label. Okay, so let me say y axis will be 125. That's 140 here. That's a little bit fine. Okay, so I can choose to remove this text. So now what we're going to do is that we want to say that whenever we type in the text field and an IP, the address of a website, let's say, for example, www.youtube.com, we want our program to return its IP address. So that's what we need to do. How can we do that? So we need to add the action listener to this particular class, and we will apply that action listener to our button. So to implement the action listener, you say implement action listener. So this is gonna make sure that our MyFrame class will not only inherit from the JFrame class, but it will also implement the properties of the action listener interface. Now you have to import the action listener class and then add on implemented methods. So this will add the action performed method down here. And after you have done that, come back to your button. You simply say button that add 
action listener and then pass in a parameter referring to the class that is implementing the action listener. So that class is this class that we are finding ourselves in. Uh, for the argument to be a little bit more explicit, I will change the name of that uh, event, the action event to EVT, referring to, e to event. So in the action performed method, we are going to use a try and catch method, try string, and we will call it website host. So this is going to be a string and that string will be equal to whatever value the user will type in the text field. So we will say text field get text. So the get text method is a method that is used to capture values. So this will mean that when the user will type web address in the text field, our program will be able to capture it and then use it somewhere else. Now, say another string variable that we will call IP. And now we will write some methods that will allow us to return the IP address of the website host. So we will say java.net, that inet address, that get by name. So now here, this particular method, get by name, will take an argument or a parameter. And that parameter needs to be the web host for which we want to get the IP address. So in here, I'm going to pass website host, and then I will say get host address. And then after we've done that, we can now work on the label. We will say that once we have gotten the IP address, we want to output it on our screen. And because the IP address will be returned as a string, we can use that as a label on our frame. So we'll say label set text. So we will pass a string here. We'll say the, the IP address of, now here we will pass in the website host address, website host, and then we'll say is, here we'll pass in the IP string variable. So now let's write the catch statement. In the catch, we'll say exception, that will be ex for exception system that out print line. Uh, we will pass in ex. So basically, what we are saying, if you click on the button that is applying the action listener, run this line of code. First, you have to try these line of lines of code. You have to get you know the web host address that the user would type in the text field. After you have gotten that, you have to get that website host address IP address. So that is uh, the line of code here. Once you have gotten the IP address, we want you to update the text of the label you added on the frame. Okay, so let me run. Now, if I say www.codingriver.com and then click on find out about the IP address, so you see the IP address of codingriver.com is, so nothing is shown because the size of our label, we have to increase that. So we'll come here, we'll say for the height, 500 pixels. So now let me run again, the www.codingriver.com, click on the find, okay. So now you can see the IP address is this line of code is coming from, you know, what we said here. So it's updating the layout of our, the text of our label. If you recall in the constructor here, we choose not to put any text. So the text is set only when we type in the address of a website host. And then when we get the IP, that IP is added here. And that's why you can see the text. So let's try another website. We will say www.google.com. When you run, you see the IP address of www.google.com is, you know, 216.58.201.228. What if I change this and say www.youtube and then run? Now you can see a different IP address. The IP address of www.youtube.com is 172. 0.217.1819.238. And then you can play around these GUI components. For example, you can choose to set the background color of the button by saying set background or color to blue, for example, import the color class. You can set uh, foreground. So that's going to be the text color white. That will be 
Okay, you can also work on the label text. So a label that set font, new font like this. You can set the font style to bold, and maybe the font size, you know, when you run. So you can click on the button. Now you can see what is shown. So if you don't specify any thing in the text field, it's going to um, return your local host IP address because we didn't set anything. But if we write in google.com, now you can see what is showing on the screen. Let me just reduce the size of the text, www.youtube.com, find IP address. Now you can see the IP address. So I can say that uh, change positioning. I can also change the color. So I'll simply say label that set foreground color that red. Now here, w.google.com. Now you can see all the changes that we have made. Let me edit the x-axis coordinate of uh, the label. Uh, as for the button, I can also say btn that set focusable false. Now when I run and say www.google.com, there you can see the message showing on the screen. So guys, I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share, to comment and to ask any question if you have. And uh, let's meet in the next video.